Anu will be talking about new strategies to detect glaucoma progression, perimetry or imaging. And she's, of course, Alastair Moody. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've got my magical eye on so that I can catch these death eaters of glaucoma progression and nip them right in the bud. Now, which tools shall we use? Shall we use the wand of perimetry or a fog glass of imaging? Everybody? All right. So we all know glaucoma progresses from an undetectable disease stage to an asymptomatic disease and then goes on to functional impairment, starting from the ganglion cell death, which reflects early on to the RNFL damage and later on to the perimetric damage. We need to have a constant vigilance on the risk factors of progression, and patients with risk factors need to be followed up more thoroughly with any investigative technique that you choose. Structural progression can be done ass assessing the OCT with various tools such as RNFL thickness and the optic nerve head parameters, and also the later added parameters such as the macular ganglion cell complex, the ganglion cell IPL thickness. And functional progression can be detected using visual fields, that is perimetry, and the newer tools of glaucoma progression analysis. Progression can be detected either clinically, or it could be an event-based or a trend-based and newer modalities like AI are also now stepping in. Detecting progression in a mild to moderate glaucoma or a patient who has no glaucoma going into an early glaucoma is a no-brainer. The OCT offers the advantage of being objective and precise with the limitations of structural variability in healthy eyes and overlap may be present between the healthy eyes and early disease. A normal age-related structural loss can confound interpretation, but most importantly, the floor effect that I'll be coming upon briefly. Perimetry has the advantage of being detecting the functional damage, which is what the patient cares about, but with the limitation of being subjective, sometimes poor reproducibility, especially in patients or poor field candidates. A, a longer series of tests are required to assess progression on perimetry, and sometimes it does get better with time, thereby decreasing the sensitivity to detect progression. Now, in the early stages of the disease, the structural and the functional changes often disagree. The structural changes come in early, and the variability in automated perimetry is higher. But there comes a tipping point in this disease severity, after which there's stronger correlation between the two, or maybe even a reversal. The OCT becomes less sensitive than automated perimetry. I'm talking about the classical OCT of the RNFL thickness in detecting progression due to this floor effect. And various studies have highlighted this importance, showcasing that OCT RNFL fares better in mild to moderate glaucomas. However, most studies say that not all the uh, investigative technologies will detect progression. You may have progression documented in one or two tests, but not on the third test. In a, the study, which is quoted here, studied almost 64 patients, and uh, they come to the conclusion that only 10 of the patients had progression on all the three parameters. Now, challenges in advanced glaucoma is that you have very few progression endpoints to monitor. Floor effect is the level for any given technology below which further disease-related changes become undetectable. In perimetry, a mean deviation of less than minus 20 decibels is typically known to be reaching the floor, whereas an SDOCT imaging of thickness of less than 50 to 60 microns is classified as a floor. A study which uh, analyzed the structural functional relationship in 147 glaucomatous eyes over a period of three years by studying the serial visual field testing, the RNFL imaging, and the macular OCT imaging came to the conclusion that there was significantly more OCT progression endpoints than there were on the visual field. And detecting progression using all the three modalities, again, was uncommon and was seen only in 7% of the eyes. Now, what are the factors which confound this structural functional agreement? The analysis method used by these technologies is different. There are differences in the measurement floors and higher prevalence of artifact and variability in severe glaucoma due to reduced data signal. So when we're talking about advanced glaucomas, it becomes important to detect localized change and change over time by analyzing changes in the central sensitivity values. Central 10-2 testing becomes important because it studies almost 68 points in the central 10 degree fields and larger stimulus size can definitely be used to detect progression on those particular points. Repeated testing and more frequent testing becomes important to compensate for more artifacts in cases of severe glaucoma. 
and studies have demonstrated that changes in the central 6 mm of the macula show excellent correlation with 10 degree visual field testing. Now talking about progression on perimetry, it is usually studied with glaucoma progression analysis, which can be of two types, that is the event-based and the trend-based. In event-based progression is studied as either present or absent based on a predefined change in the parameters. Point-wise glaucoma analysis plots are done and a significant deterioration in the plots at three or more points on two fields subsequent is possible progression and on three subsequent tests is likely progression. This is after a baseline of at least two fields. But these become unimportant or may have confounding factors with mean deviation less than 20 as we talked about the floor effect in perimetry. So you can see there was a progression in the first fields compared to the second fields. This is outside the test base fields. So this showed a possible progression and when it uh, is reflected on the third field, it becomes a likely progression. However, trend-based analysis has come more into the picture with visual field index, which was introduced by Benston and Heil in 2008, and it gives the percentage of visual function which is corrected for age. Not only does it tell how much of the field has been lost, but it also predicts the rate of progression and helps to differentiate rapid versus slow progressors. Talking about OCT, the longitudinal analysis of OCT macular and ONH parameters have shown to detect structural progression even when peripapillary RNFL have reached the floor effect. So the talk about OCT reaching a floor effect and perimetry being better gets null and void here when we talk about the OCT macula and the ONH parameters. In a, in a study of a cohort of advanced glaucoma with mean deviation of less than minus 20 on perimetry, they showed that GCIPL thickening, thinning was noted in almost as high as 31% of the eyes. And macular OCT parameters do definitely provide an alternative for objective and quantitative monitoring of patients with advanced glaucoma who may have retained their vision and functional assessment cannot be done. So you can study macular GCC scans in various quadrants and GC-IPL thickness can also be calculated. ONHQ parameters like the rim area, disc area and CD ratio can be analyzed and event and trend based analysis can also be studied on the OCT parameters. An important point here is that lower baseline scans are required in OCT compared to visual fields because of high artifacts and poor reproducibility in the visual fields being a subjective method. Newer web source OCTs which have a deeper penetration help in imaging of the choroid and the lamina cribrosa, which may in future help to individually visualize the RGC layer. The most upcoming strategy to monitor progression is the OCT angiography, which, has a, which studies the movement of the red blood cells and allows for evaluation of peripapillary ONH and macular vasculature at various depths, exposing sev several vascular networks. Studies have shown that in eyes with glaucoma and a single hemifield defect, decreased vascular density has been noted in the macula and the peripapillary regions even in the other unaffected hemifield. So in, uh, in a study that was done at our center in uh, studying the retinal structure and microvasculature in symmetric advanced glaucomas with 0.8 or 0.9 cups in paired eyes with visual asymmetry of two or more lines, by Dr. Keerthi Singh and Dr. Shradharaj Srivastava. They studied the parameters of OCT RNFL, OCT macula, GCC complex, and octa parameters in the various layers. And there was a definitive uh, indicator of an improved macular GCC thickness in the eyes with better vision, which was even more significant in the octa parameters. So the better eye vision had better vascular density compared to the poorer eye visions. You can see a large number of vascular dropout areas in the poor visual I, in these cups which had symmetrical cupping. And sectoral analysis also revealed that papillomacular bundle sectors had a better correlation with the visual acuity. The GCC was found to be superior to RNFL in predicting visual loss in advanced glaucoma as per the OROC curves. We also have experimental OCT systems coming in like the Doppler OCT and the visible light OCT which claims that they'll be able to detect the pruning of the RGC dendrites as an early indicator of glaucoma using adaptive optics with the SLO. Novel biomarkers are also coming up in this field to study the direct uh, measurement of the retinal ganglion cells using fluorescent tagged cholera toxins, fluorescent labeled CGA MP3 cells, and also detection of apoptosing retinal cells. 
However, the future of detection of glaucoma progression does become an AI. AI right now is used only for detection of glaucomas or early progressions, but in advanced glaucomas, it will come up in a big way as studies are already underway. So in conclusion, I would like to say that following up with perimetry is important, but in advanced glaucomas where perimetry reaches a floor effect, OCT, macular GCCs, and octa parameters do play a very important role, and patients can be followed up on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think you give a very, very uh, vast and very good understanding of the subject.